Lagrangian conjecture was derived only for this number of one. But to get to this not supersymmetric SU3 K theory of forms, it's easy. There are several steps. First, I uh, decrease the number of supersymmetry from four to two uh, by adding the four. Then I break the supersymmetry in a nice way to get non supersymmetric SUN gate theory with four, which is called large NCCD. But the theory looks like QCD, but the difference is the gauge group, the number of rooms. In real QCD, you have eight rooms. However, in this theory with SUN gate theory, you have n squared minus one fourth uh, rule, and you need to take n to infinity. So there are many, many rooms. So if you can come from here to here, then you reach uh, this. Let's see the phase diagram. For this uh, highest supersymmetric uh, gauge theory, that's the theory with four supersymmetries, there are, so in QCD there are two sectors, gluon sector and gluon sector. In gluon sector we have gluons, but there are supersymmetric particles. Gluons plus fermionic gluons, those are called luminons, and also, because you have four supersymmetries, you can do four times the supersymmetry transformation. So you have six scalars in addition to the three. So this is really different from uh, QCD. And actually, because of this higher supersymmetry, both cannot be uh, allowed. And for this theory, using the gravity law, the phase diagram is given like this. So <laughs> Here, of course, there is no force, so you cannot turn on the density. There is no force. On the other hand, you can turn on the temperature. And in temperature, uh, even though you have a temperature, there is no phase bound. It's just a rule of thumb. But uh, please uh, keep in your mind that uh, this phase diagram is still non trivial. Okay? This theory is strongly coupled. So without using supersymmetry theory, you never know what is a phase diagram. And to show this phase diagram, what is uh, computed in supersymmetry gravity side is something like this. You have a higher dimensional theory with a, a antiposition uh, asymptotic, and you put a black hole to push on the temperature, and then you have a theory of gravity. So this is the corresponding uh, gravity function. Now let's go over to the second step, which includes only two supercharges, the supersymmetric gauge theory for a box, which is called N equal to two SQCD. Gluon sector has, uh, still has luminal that's scalars, but we have force. So we can turn on the uh, force density. And this is the result of the string theory. You have a gluon plasma plus meson, and you have four gluon plasma. And there is a phase bunch, first of all. And then if you turn on the uh, density of this large value, then there is an unstable phase, which indicates some uh, a color flavor locking phase which I will work with a little bit later. And the corresponding uh, picture in string theory side is like this. You have still the finite temperature black hole with hopping temperature. And then we put all four string parts, which correspond to the form of the <coughs> Temperature is growing, like a growing black hole. But anyway, let's go to the third case, where we have no supersymmetric SUN gate theory. So here, the long sector is consisting of gluons plus heavy gluons. So these are heavy, so at low energy you have only two. And you have quark sector, there are four, kind of fermions. And the result is like this. You have a hadron phase, you have a gluon plasma plus meson phase, and you have four gluon phase. And uh, there is an indication of the maybe instability. Um No uh, obstacle to many. 
the corresponding geometry is uh, different from the uh, black hole background for the Hadron space. And actually, the uh, space time representing this compact space is very interesting problem in gravity. And if you heat up the phase, uh, heat, heat up the system, then here there is a first order phase function to change the background geometry from here to the black hole. <coughs> So in this uh, way, we can get this uh, phase diagram for QCD like this QE. But the remaining thing is, of course, the, in, in, this, uh, in this computation, I need to take SUN and so on. But when you realize the QCD and QC3, so it's a challenge. Progress on QCD and superstring theory extend out to condensed matter theory. For example, there are theories for the program of superconductivity about this viscosity, and there are many uh, famous papers. And corresponding to these pictures, there are some higher dimensional uh, black hole pictures, and people compute everything in terms of this high dimensional gravity to get superconductivity. <coughs> so, this is the end of my talk. I wanted to deliver this statement. Superstring in mathematics actually can resolve a lot of mysteries in strongly conducted systems. Although it's getting closer and closer to realistic systems, we are not actually reaching this real system. But suppose that we are, you are just fine with uh, say, saying some qualitative thing rather than just predicting a number of superstring D, then I hope that uh, this uh, superstring technique can serve as a real, real good tool for for exploring strong quality systems. Okay, thank you very much. So, any questions? Okay. So you say uh, Mac in uh, theory A to theory B. I was saying that you can find an nonlinear transformation of <coughs> variables from theory A to theory B, or more than that, more than this notion. So as for this uh, su super string uh, mapping from strongly coupled base theory to gravity, there was no proposed transformation yet. But if you want to prove the statement, of course, you need to find the nonlinear and for a very simplified version, like a lower dimensional version, simplified string theory, there is a proposed uh, nonlinear transformation. <coughs> and here you got among many, many inspirations, like uh, why we have a higher dimension. It actually can come from a, a smooth particle bound state, but separated a little bit. And this uh, log separation can be replaced with a higher dimensional version. So it, we need a proof. And as for the uh, example, if I show the vortices, in that case, actually, there is a nonlinear transformation. Any other questions? So can I, uh, as a condensing the theorist, can I treat this as a as a, a, a calculational tool, or is it some technology that uh, might help me calculate something, or can I take it that it's gonna tell me something deep in my say hover model, right? I help see. me hover. I see. I see. Yeah. I I hope uh, someday this can be applied to hover. So here, as I said, uh, the, this uh, duality can be uh, constructed 
based on the Z-brain. But if you have a peculiar Z-brain configuration which corresponds to Hubbard model, then you can use this technology to map it to some other theory of Hubbard model. But uh, that brain configuration has, has not been known. So I think that's the first part. But uh, besides that kind of real computation, I think the potential possibility of this computation is to predict the existence of a, a nodal new phase. So for example, <coughs> in fully correlated system, although I oh, suppose that I'm given some Hamiltonian, then I'm asked to compute this Hamiltonian, then I, of course I cannot do that. But uh, suppose that I can start with my Hamiltonian, then compute uh, using this supercell technology to predict some interesting phase. Then we can rely on some universality and expect that uh, this new phase may be present in your case. That's another way. So there, there are two ways. Uh, the first part, first one, the Hubbard model is simply very difficult. The second one, we really are also smart. So we are uh, using this technology to, to potentially show strongly diverge in it from other direction. Okay, I know the weak field is very beauty very well and the physics is very simple. Mm -hmm. What could you imply in the physical side? Oh I see. So you want to reverse engineer this technology. Yeah. So the uh, ultimate question in string theory is uh, the theory of the problem of quantum quantum. So string theory was to be a candidate of quantum quantum. But uh, we don't know what is happening, for example, at the uh, stage of early universe, where the curvature is very strong, and the quantum curvature is very strong. And in that situation, if you, if you use this technology, then it can be mapped to a very simple, say, gauge field, which is something. So uh, a, a possibility is, to by using this, for very well understood uh, gauge theory and map it to strongly coupled gravity. Then we can solve this uh, problem of early universe of this. That's another way of using this problem. Did, did I answer this? I just wonder, since the field thing is like so simple, then how do I imagine what the implication is in the gravitational side? What could um, strong interesting the associated work. Right. Um, so if I have a proof of this of your symmetry, then I, I could see I, I could tell you more about this <laughs> what is happening here. But the question is of course uh, we can compute many things in uh, this theory time couple, but uh, we don't we don't know precisely what is the corresponding phenomenon. So that's why we use the different weekly couple of gravity and so we can there there we can have to compare two, but the other side is a bit difficult. But uh, the 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 most important way of saying this uh, inverse problem is we can define string theory from case two. If you look at this original Maragasana paper, then it uh, it clearly stated that it can be serving as a definition of so you start from liquid couple of gauge theory, or gauge theory is uh, almost completely defined as a quantum package. Yeah? So it can be served, it can serve as a definition of string theory. Actually, we are lacking a definition of string theory in the non so it can serve as a definition. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the let me try another uh, aspect of reverse engineering. Um, we, uh, as you say, and we not well know that this uh, uh, this uh, gauge gravity duality or holographic principle, but so far it's a it's a conjecture. Yes. So uh, against the direction of application, going backwards, and uh, what's been the uh, current status? about a deeper understanding of why there is such a 
correspondence. Um, yeah, I think it's a very important question. But uh, my answer is that there are very few papers which uh, tries to solve this question. And uh, all of them actually fail to be consistent. So we don't know whether those attempts are really promising or not. And in addition to that, because so, so this conjecture is based on a very simple picture which I showed. So uh, if uh, this picture is correct, then probably we don't need to rely on super super. Since this is a simple picture on the brain, you can look at things in two ways. So, but uh, the original uh, uh, conjecture was uh, using super symmetry, and the people have believed that uh, this duality relies heavily on super symmetry. For the proofs of all the attempts, all the attempts of the proofs, the proofs are using this. Indeed, you know, coming back to the very original proof, first time, oh. holographic music, that's not super symmetric. Right, right, indeed. So uh, there may be something deeper. Sure. Sure. So I'm, I'm sure this is a very challenging problem. And, uh, there is no proof for how we should prove it, except for this uh, very simple, simple picture. The difficulty is in uh, uh, how to uh, come up as you end for uh, to uh, do three But uh, so what if uh, someone do the QCD calculations with uh, maybe uh, uh, SU four, SU five, mm -hmm. uh, and try to uh, look at the phase diagram, and maybe uh, if n is large, and that will reach your your face government in the last stage. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a very important point. Sure. So if you can do a computation of QCD by other methods, for SU3, SU4, SU10, then of course we can compare the results of that with a super string theory result for SUN. But the question here is, you can, there is no other way to compute this phase diagram. That's why we uh, have to, uh, uh, at least I have to use this super thing technique to compute the point. So if, if you, so, so, so your question is, so if your question is to know the relation between these two people, then of course you can start with super symmetric cases. Then you can compute the phase diagram Gets closer. 
So uh, we were trying to apply the holography to condensed matter. So we know like the microscopic uh, theory in condensed matter physics QED, which are the U1 case group. But on the other hand, you are dealing with those uh, uh, QCD matter, which are the U1 gauge group generally. So do I think about, is it possible you can see that in the condensed matter side, uh, I mean, there's an emergent uh, kind of higher rank gauge group somehow appearing that has an effective description for the corresponding Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm sure it's a very important and difficult question. Um, as uh, Professor Chen said, uh, this duality, uh, theory duality can be applied for large n gauge theories, which are SUN gauge group. In condensed matter theory, we don't have this SUN gauge theory. But the uh, intuitive understanding of this is that if world SUN indicates some quite many degrees of freedom, which works as an interaction between closed films. So in the case of SUN QCD, you have SUN Bruno that gives you an interaction between two points. In condensed matter physics, you have two electrons. There are, of course, photon exchange that is new one. But in addition to that, there is another force between these two channels. In the case of DCS theory, that is for in the case of high high DC heat break, it's some spin interaction between these two. Right. And when you think of this uh, interaction as due to some very large number of degree freedom on the back, then I think we can hypothetically use this terminology of having SUN symmetry as an interaction. That's a one way of understanding this application of SUN gauge for this matter. Although we never know how this actual SUN gauge symmetry emerges from this theory, we never question it. But on the other hand, what we question is suppose that this uh, interaction due to a large degree of freedom background can serve as a pairing of then we can use this uh, supersymmetric gauge theory as a kind of example computation for solving the interaction theory. And we ask some universality, which would have happened in the So that is uh, one way of uh, thinking about this. There is no SUN gauge symmetry, but we have a large degree of freedom. <coughs> Just a small question. Just now, uh, you show a slide uh, in which uh, there are two pictures. Uh, you say that from one picture, uh, when you pull at an end, uh, you deform it into another. Yeah, just yes. this. Uh, but it seems that this, uh, this two picture is topologically uh, non equivalent. Well, Yes. <laughs> but now you just mentioned that uh, when you do these things, you must uh, restrict yourself in uh, topological equivalent case, right? Sure, sure, sure. So, Here, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to be a little more precise, let's, please give me one minute. Uh, thank you. So suppose that I have a big rest, then you have open scoop propagating this rest. And then consider a kind of process that looks like this. You pull, pull this open sweep, then sweep it up in the form of closed sweep. So this is the process which I really want to explain. But if you want uh, it to be topological equivalent, you must don't use uh, uh, cause it, uh, uh, paste to uh, put it together. You you, you cannot uh, connect uh, the two ends to be together, right? If um, you just connect the two ends together, oh, then it will not be yeah. published in a in, in that sense, as a slice, I can change its function. That's a string theory, fundamental interaction with strings. So the 
the fundamental interaction is linked to it that uh, suppose you have two processes, then it can merge as one across this. This is a, a basic interaction between the two. So if you use this, then you can consider this process. And that shows that protein can be emitted from this. Oh, I see. They are known by like, burning question, let's thank uh, the best national model again.